Welcome to Our Town, a 30-minute podcast brought to you by Best Bark Communications, a small but fierce client-centered marketing company powered by decades of experience and well-established business networks. This is Andy Ockershausen, and this is Our Town, and we're so delighted to have one of the really stars of Washington television and news as our guest, and she's not really a guest, she's a friend, and it's Wendy Rieger from News 4 Washington. Big smoochy smoochies. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, we watched you, so I want to talk to you later, but Rio, because we were tuned in every night just to see you. Aww. I didn't spend that much time watching the events. <laughs> But Wendy, you, you're you a native almost, but you weren't born here. No, but it's funny you say that because when people say, where are you from? I always say, I feel like I'm from here because I came here when I was 22. So I'm from Norfolk, Virginia. And you went to school here? I went to school to American University. That's what brought me here. I was finishing up my school. Why did you pick AU? Um for the School of Communication, it was a, a long, winding road to get here, just to ask my <laughs> poor parents, because at one point, I was at Old Dominion studying to be a psychologist. Very and, good school. And Yep, and I had uh, gotten into acting when I was in high school. I directed my senior class play and took a lot of theater in high school and took a lot of theater classes in at Old Dominion and then dropped out in my sophomore year because I was darling I was doing dinner theater <laughs> in uh, in Norfolk and Virginia Beach you know there's no closer way to get to Broadway than to do dinner theater uh, in Virginia <laughs> Beach is to do a girl Anywhere. there's a girl in my soup I did that kind, that kind of British farce and your stuff. mom and dad were from Norfolk and they mom's from Natchitoches Louisiana and dad's from Youngstown Ohio but mom's a teacher so go tell your teacher mother that you know you're dropping out of college <laughs> in your sophomore year and her hair stood on end and I said I was gonna become an actress Oh. So she, what is she going to do? What are you going to do with a 19 year old who says, I'm not going back to school? So I started doing a lot of theater. And it's interesting. I tell my friends uh, today whose children suddenly want to veer, you know, left. And I say, you know what? Let them because because I took that time off and went into theater, I started I worked as a Kelly girl to, to make some money during the day because I was a fast typist and then, then I was working at an advertising agency and doing a lot of advert you know they were using me in their ads because they'd say hey run up and go shoot this whatever I started doing um, the news on uh, W on FM 99 the FM rock station they needed to do news on Saturday and Sunday morning for the FCC I did it only to make money. I wasn't a news person. They said, "Do you, you know, we need someone to do the news." So I went and auditioned as an actor being a news person, got the job and did that for a year and that's how I fell in love with news and that got me back into college. So when I went to go look for a college and there was a mass communication uh, major was out there, someone said, "Go to Virginia Commonwealth in Richmond." or go to American University. And I was ready to go to Virginia Commonwealth, which is what I'd first heard of, and was all ready to go. And two weeks before I was supposed to go, someone called me and said, have you ever heard of American University in Washington? And a light bulb, it, I had an epiphany, <laughs> and I thought, you had heard I, of it. I need to go there. So great, in two weeks, school. two weeks I scrambled, and in um, 1978, September of 78, I came here to Washington. Well, now um, AU has re- arrived at a a position a lot of great schools have is almost impossible to get in there now. It's really, well, really anyone tough. could get in there when I was going. <laughs> I, 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 was just I got in there. <laughs> I, took, I took a communications course from a, a guy named Fred Fisk. Remember that name? Oh my god! He was my teacher. Oh my god! That's Fred I, was on the on uh, the. He then became the on eighty eight five FM. Oh, he was the Fred great. Fisk show. But I was working for Jim Gibbons at the time. Remember, okay. he did our morning show on WMAL. Yeah. And then you interned at WMAL, where we met, and everybody said, "There's a woman or a person that's going places." I said, "There's a girl that's going places." That's and okay. And you did radio at WTOP. Yeah, the powerhouse. Well, I started out at eighty-eight five FM for Morning Edition and learned a lot there, and uh, became the local. When I was twenty-six, I became the local host of Morning Edition. So I learned about writing and um, long format radio and the use of ambient sound. and And I was listening every day to these great. I called them magazine writers. I consider the people at NPR to be like magazine writers. Absolutely. They, it was a, it's they're specialists, and I got to listen to that, and uh, that sort of informed me and 
they mentored me without knowing they were mentoring me because I was using them using them as examples of what I was what I needed to be. And yeah, but great examples and, they were and great a huge examples. voice. And then you, you had you Susan Stamberg, your- you had Bob Edwards. My Lord, the the language and the writing and the richness of uh, 88.5 FM and National Public Radio was just, uh, I, I, I was so lucky to be in that fertile ground. And then you went, and the CBS had wonderful voices on radio. And, you know, Powerhouse, that right. was a Tiffany of broadcasting for right. CBS then back I went, yes. in those days. Then I went to WTOP, which was a whole different ball game because it was sort of like the Indy 500. You know, NPR was sort of had a certain garden party <laughs> feel to it, if you will. You Laid know, it was back. very it was very spa like it was like spa radio, <laughs> you know, spa <laughs> new. not not in that, that the content, but it was just relaxed and much more um, uh, thoughtful and whatever. And then you get thrown into uh, WTOP where it was fast and furious. I remember covering my first Right to Life uh, march on March on Washington, and it was back in the day when we had to file on f- phones, phone booths, and you had the alligator clips, and you had to take the phone booth, and the <laughs> and the and the phone company would would. A paste would glue the bottom of their receiver, and we had to open that receiver up to use the alligator clips to feed our sound. And I learned how to wrap it. I mean, I would <laughs> slam that receiver down to crack the glue, and then unscrew it. And put, but I remember hurling myself from one phone book to the next, just running down Constitution Avenue, interviewing people along the way, and then just running that day. Oh my gosh! But you were Thank learning God while was, you were yes, running. Yes, yes, I was. You were polishing <laughs> yes. your skills. Sure. And at one point I saw there was a cop, a motorcycle cop, and I almost thought, what would it take for me to say to him, can you put me on the back of your motorcycle and just take <laughs> me up right, the like, five Copper. blocks? Um, but, but that I'd... prepared you for your WRC TV. I still call it RC TV. Mm-hmm. I know that's news for. But it prepared you for your street reporter role. Always does. And, and yet, when I got to Channel 4... Uh, I was at TOP for about two and a half years and had started working a little bit on the weekends at CNN because my husband at the time worked there. So that kind of got my feet wet in uh, in television and then Channel 4 called me and I went there. That was a whole another kind of mixing bowl <laughs> explosion because now you had to add video to it. So you had to be concerned about your video. I always thought, well, you know, in radio you just write. You write your story, boom, you're done. Now you had to worry about the video. And so that was another, and they put me on nights. I was weekend nights when I first started there and nights during the week during the drug wars. So we were running on dead bodies. I mean, it was all the time. I mean, people don't realize how bad it was. That was 19. I got there in 88. You could, you could go into, there would be houses with four people executed inside a house just every other night. It was just normal. That was the normal. Didn't you have uh, Pat Buchanan on the street then, and uh, yep, and, and Mike was on the um, street. No, my, Pat, Mike Buchanan was with Channel Nine. Um, you and had this Pat. whole. We had Pat Collins, who had just come Didn't to Channel he Four. Somewhere else, he'd been at Channel him? Seven and Channel Nine That's right, in I knew Chicago, him at seven. and he had had was it? He'd come over about a year or two, before, about two years before me. So I had again uh, this. Uh, you know, hierarchy of old street reporters that you could learn from and Absolutely. you could watch. Absolutely, those guys were and, legends. And the thing I always tell people is watch students when I talk to them and say, study. Your job when you get into anything is to study the people around you. Boy. I even did that when I went to the Olympics now. I've been in this business for 36 years and I've never covered an Olympics. So my first four days there, I studied. I quietly watched all the sports reporters who were in my area to see what they were doing so I could figure out how do I crack this, uh, you Well, you, you did know. It. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk yeah. about the Olympic. Yeah. But we had somebody like that working at WM named Larry Kreb, oh. who was out on the street all night. Right. We don't know what he ever slept, but he just was right. out there. But right. that, those were different days in broadcast. Am I correct? Yeah, that the was the old. four and seven and nine. When, when you really, it was, the competition was just so wonderfully at a high ro- rolling boil. And it was about the story. It really, you really felt like you were in the trenches. It wasn't about tweeting and social media. It really was about meaty. It was meaty <laughs> back then. That's where you, you know, did. now you, you had great fistfuls of news back then. You know, and you don't feel I, that now. I recall vividly the series you were doing on the Greens. 
mm-hmm. and how you Going got green. into that. And you won awards with it. Mm-hmm. And you didn't have the support you now have or would have had. Correct? Because the the station was going through a difficult time. Well, the station was about to be sold. General Electric, which owned NBC, was was about to sell the whole network. And so they have to, as any place does, you start becoming lean. And at the same time, uh, digital cameras were coming on board, the small digital cameras. And from a union perspective, this is going to get a little granular, but from a union perspective, our union, uh, the NABITs, who are our technical staff, they did not have jurisdiction over digital so now digital was a wide open field right I so they actually gave me a camera i was one of the first people they gave a camera to because i couldn't get anyone to shoot my going green series because <laughs> uh, i had to do it every tuesday it was once a week and it just we didn't have the uh ge was cutting our budget so they could look good on paper when they Absolutely. sold it and so they handed me a camera and i actually i know i i pissed off my brothers in uh <laughs> nabit but i'm an after a sag after but i you have to do what you have to do right. to survive in this business so i started shooting for two years i shot my own stories well, and you were edited ahead them. Of the curve on the green too mm-hmm. we, were, we started it. it i started it uh going green and nbc then adopted it and mandated Correct. it for Around all the, the owned country. and operated stations across the country yeah. you're a trailblazer like okay the green girl all righty <laughs> well, <green, laughs> well green girl we're going to take a break all here right. uh i'm talking with the fabulous reporter street reporter and now a fabulous anchor wendy rieger And this is Andy Ockershausen, and this is Our Town. This is Sonny Jorgensen. Got a confession to make. I let my wife drag me to one of those Mike Collins estate planning seminars. Like I don't have enough on my plate with a certain football team. Actually, it wasn't too bad. In fact, we both learned a whole lot about how to protect our kids and grandkids down the road and to take care of ourselves right now. So if you get one of Mike's invitations in the mail, go. I'm glad I did. Get all the information and register online at MikeCollins.com. That's MikeCollins.com. You're listening to Our Town with Andy Ockershausen. Brought to you by Best Bark Communications. We're back on Our Town with Wendy Rieger. It's Andy Ockershausen, and we're delighted we have Our Town. And Wendy, you you didn't have Our Town, but everybody I know was watching you at the Olympics because you were local and you were talking about local people, and we loved it. The Olympics I were a great experience. Too. That was my first Olympics. This was my first Olympics. And Where, wow. I thought you went to Sochi. No, no, that was Hanley. Jim Hanley went to Sochi. Oh, did he? Oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, this was my first. And boy, you, you, it is an Olympic event, even for the people covering it, because it's you're working constantly. It was my first time doing 15 and 17 hour days constantly. Were you, it's not like you do one 17, you do them for, you do 20, Seven 20, days a week. 17 hour days in a row, which is, uh, it's interesting watching your body adapt to that, but you had to because Rio was spread out. We were, the time difference, we were only an hour ahead. So it wasn't the time difference. It was just Rio was so spread out in order to cover the stories and to, and to do the quality or the level of work that you needed to do and the quantity that you needed, you had to work 15 to 17 hour days. And you had, you also had a, had a, an advantage in that you had two local people, at least in your coverage, that were stars of the Olympics. Well, we had Katie Ledecky, who is, I our think girl. now, yes, she's a, she is our girl, but now I think she is a citizen of the world. I think mean, the world claims Absolutely. her now. But yes, she was ours. And as a result, I got the first local interview with her after Bob Costas let her go the night that she won the, you know, set her like 15th world record and won her fourth gold. So uh, I got her. And, and, we also had Helen Maroulis uh, in wrestling. And that was, I think, one of the more exciting things for me was seeing, and we had Ashley Neff, the kayak where was she kayaker. from Northern Virginia? She She's from Rockville. Uh, oh, Helen Marulis is the first woman to win the gold medal for U.S. wrestling in the, in the Olympics, and she is an incredible spirit, uh, personality, she's great and it on was the two. and it's wonderful. I mean, she's also just beautiful. It's it's just wonderful to see. It can't always be a track and field and swimming. You have athletes Many who are working things. their you know their buns off, and and devoting their lives to a lot of stuff and to all to these other. Uh, events that sports that people may not be paying attention to you can't uh, jenny thrasher won the first gold of the entire games for shooting 
from uh, <laughs> she's from Fairfax, and she's uh, the one from Northern Virginia. She was Virginia. Our, the first gold medal of the entire of any, 2016 right, anybody. Games was Jenny Thrasher. Well, the, the, and also a beautiful, lovely spirit. You I know. heard somebody explain about the gymnasts that these young ladies or girls work like beavers to get where they are, and when the Olympics over, they don't compete anymore. They grow out of it. Well, I, I think they compete as long as as long as they can. But you're right; their bodies change. Their bodies change. Yeah, and when you look at when you look at like Simone, um, no, I can't Not remember Biles. Biles, Simone Biles, because um, you're on a first name basis. <laughs> yours is calling this Simone. Or what's one Simone's Simone, next event? I call her Simone. And uh, you look at at what they have to do. I huh. mean, the stations of the cross they have to to go to, uh, to, all the different events that they have to do within gymnastics. It's it's incredible, but the, what. What I loved is everyone. I loved getting into their heads and asking them, "What's in your head?" That's when why you're you doing were down it? there. That's what was interesting. Um, Helen Maroulis told me that she views wrestling as her art. That she views the muscles like a puzzle, and she feels like there's different colors that she's painting, wow. and the mat is her canvas. Yeah, she was way yeah. out there. And huh? then, yeah, and I also <laughs> love Katie Ledecky always saying, "She just, you know, she kept saying it was easy. Well, that one was easy, and she left it in the pool." I love that. She gave it all at that moment, lived in the present, and left it in the pool. There was a lot of philosophy coming out of these uh, athletes. Well, I thought you captured you'd have that. To be. And yeah. also the the thing with Katie that she wasn't really pressed. She did it on her own. Right. She didn't have somebody following her. They were way behind her. Oh, my God. It was like she could get a manicure while she waited for number two to come in. <laughs> you know? At and the she pool. Was... She had to wait. Read a book, Katie. You know? Well, it's wait for number one or the second for the silver to come in. You know? Yeah, she was great. She was. I called her the head of the spear because of uh, the formation in the pool. She was way out in front. Well, we're going to send a letter. We get a letter writing campaign to make sure you go to Tokyo. Oh, <laughs> no. Yeah. You'll do that. It's yeah, 12 don't hours do that. It's a yeah, different world. Yeah, don't do that. That's going to take me four years to recover from this one, <laughs> to be honest with you. Oh, my Lord. Oh. It was interesting coming late, doing this late in my life, doing the Olympics, something this physically challenging late in my life, um, you know. But it's not late. Come Honey, on, I'm Wendy. 60. Honey, I'm 60. Yeah. yeah, I was able. It was. It Look, was. You're it working was with a lot of old dogs over there. Channel yeah, you're right. 4. I'm. I'm. Uh, <laughs> you're a I'm baby. Still, I'm in kindergarten still. That's at right. Channel Four compared to everybody else. Yeah. Well, this is uh, our town, and I'm talking with the, the indefatigable Wendy Rieger, and we'll be right back. This is Andy Ockershausen talking to Tommy Giacomo and bragging about his restaurant, The Palm. Hi, I'm Tommy Giacomo. Why don't you come down and see me at The Palm Restaurant? I've been there for 43 years. We have great steaks, great lobsters, great food. Character cheers on the wall. It's just a fun place to eat and drink. We're located at 19th and N, just below DuPont Circle. For reservations, call 202-293-9091. That's 202-293-9091 www.thepalm.com Our Town with Andy Ockershausen We're back on Our Town with Wendy Rieger and Wendy, I read that wonderful article in the Washington Post about your decision to move downtown in our town. Oh, city center. Yeah, downtown is the hot place to be now. And it's so weird because I used to be in a live truck, you know, 35 <laughs> years ago, you know, rolling through downtown and it was all, you know, uh, boarded up and dangerous. Different and world. now it is, it's like, it's like Emerald City down there. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, opened up a magazine article uh, and saw city center was being built and to use a phrase that from, used to be the convention center yes site. exactly and i thought you know this is a phrase tina fey always says i th i thought i want to go to there and <laughs> i called them i w was sitting on my gazebo out at the river house right across from where y'all live talk about that and deal. and i ran inside and grabbed my phone and called and made an appointment to go see them in a couple of days and look at a model and i put money down immediately you know some things you just feel you just you have to you can't, like you can't overthink you. it you just go boom i got to do this and i was one of the first people to move in uh it'll be three years this december and now it's it's a celebrity hangout now wendy is it absolutely <laughs> okay. people talk about wendy rieger and the former attorney general of the united states oh i right yes I, eric holder is in there he's, yeah. he's a floor below me he and, was our neighbor out in uh, and, and his Valley, wife sharon was my doctor downtown. so i run into to his wife to sharon periodically but you, yeah, sharon you adopted the city and you have yes. two worlds correct yeah and it's really the best of both worlds because we have the beautiful chesapeake bay as you know out on the out uh south of annapolis and on the west it's river. on the west 
Lost River, and that's really that's been my home for 17 years, and that really is my um, that's my where my soul goes. But downtown is just sort of is it ignites me when I come downtown. Also, you get to walk. I walk a lot. I love the energy of the city, and I, I just Moving. love the feel. I love that Macy's on 12th Street. <laughs> with, it feels like old school Macy's, kind of like this Lord and Taylor up here in Chevy Chase. You just really feel like you're going back in town. Time. All these lovely older women who wait on you in the cosmetic department and <laughs> and in the jewelry department. It's just the best. I really feel like it's 19, you know, 68, and I'm I'm going back in time. Well, I love the downtown. You mentioned one of the drug changes down there, and there are two stories. In a drug store? Oh, well, oh, the wall, the Walgreens. Walgreens. It's like three stories. It's, it's three impossible. stories of just. It's. I went in there. I'm in heaven. I got their little <laughs> special, uh, the keychain discount thing. It's like, oh my god, I go there and live in their makeup. It's department. downtown in our town. Yeah. And no, then, the downtown area and seeing oh. what's happened going up 14th Street. I mean, you can't even get into. I was at La Diplomat the other night. It's just jammed. It's, in it's fact, impossible. I have to get. I can't get into these restaurants and I won't use my name because I'm afraid they'll go, we don't care who you are. So uh, <laughs> this, friend, this, this friend of mine at work, Mona Nabili, she always calls the restaurants and says, hi, hi I'm, I'm calling for Wendy Rieger at Channel 4. I'm her assistant. She'd like to dine there tonight at 7 o'clock. Bam, she gets me in. <laughs> she gets me in. I always say to her, I, I, open table, I couldn't get in. Last night, I said, I couldn't get, couldn't get into La Diplomat, open table. Can you get me in? <laughs> because you don't want to call and say, hi, it's Wendy Rieger. Can I get in? And they go, yeah, no. No. Who no. are you? We don't know who you are. It's funny. <laughs> but it's just exciting to see the city and all the young people, all the bicycles. Early in the morning, the bicycle traffic in the city is really nice. It's really? just lovely. Before the traffic gets and, and the other thing is when you walk, you actually get to see the city um, from a human level and at a, the right pace rather than flying through it just looking at when sure, the right. light green up ahead. So as a result, you get to see these beautiful old churches that tons of them downtown that are tucked between these high rises. And I'm so glad. And they'll always be there. I, and I, you, I love that. I love that. You hear the, the pealing of their bells at certain times. Uh, they have special uh, arts programs and concerts. It really is a, a wonderful, exciting Living place. Living downtown is on the cutting edge, and what's happening down on the wharf south of you right. is a spectacular. Two billion dollars. With Monty Hoffman. Effort. Yep, he and Everything Hoffman. is mm -hmm. happening. And it's wonderful. Everyone's coming. Everyone wants to come into town. More people. I couldn't get anyone out to the house at the river. Our beautiful homes in the river with our peers. No one wants to come. They act like it's a polar expedition. Well, I'll come four months from now on a Sunday. It depends. And <laughs> city center, I feel like I'm running a bar at city center in my condo. I have more people coming through there. Because it's easy. I had to put in a wine refrigerator. I'm not kidding. In, in my little 750 square foot condo. Because more people want to come have drinks Absolutely. at city center. It's easy yeah. for them to get downtown and out town. Yeah. Wendy, one of the things that, that I've seen you do and and I uh, wonder about is you live next door to your brother, and I happen to have the pleasure of meeting your dad many years Aww. ago, who was quite a hero of World War II. Oh, well. <laughs> well, he was. I mean, he flew uh, fighter planes and flew them across the ocean to Persia or someplace. Right. He was He's flying them into North. He was a ferry pilot. He was ferrying planes uh, from from Brazil from tell. Brazil uh, over to. Uh, they'd either take the northern route and deliver them to the Allies in uh, in Iran, or he would deliver them to North Africa, take the southern route from Brazil Absolutely. over to and, North Africa to water, Casablanca. And they didn't have what we have Single, now in yep. our refueling. They would have to have, if they had any bad weather and over the he water, said he would they ditch would go it, they were, And they were done. They would he be was dead. quite a hero. Yeah, he did that for for a couple of years. Yeah, and I have wonderful pictures of him at the pyramids in 19, you know, 46 and 44 uh, at the Great Pyramids. I think we saw those at yeah. that celebration. On camels and stuff. It, yeah, it, yeah it, at his when he died. Yeah, he just died three years ago last Friday and at the age of 93 he had a good long life he yeah did. it was always cool having a dad a dad who was an airline pilot because after he got out of the war right. he became an airline pilot it was always cool because just you know your dad my dad used to say he always has a sunny day because he punches through the clouds and finds the sun which is sweet oh how yeah. you like that line yeah
Yeah, now, and then your brother's still down there with you. And he yeah, which was interesting That's that my brother you have your brother that close. Well, to you. he moved in right afterwards. He bought that. He and his wife bought the house next to me, um, like three months after I moved in down there. It was their second home. It was my first home, and it was cool because my niece was just turning three at the time, and she's now going to be twenty next month. <laughs> I watched her grow up. Right I mean, there. how? I mean, they were just in Falls Church, but even Falls Church, from where I lived in Bethesda, could be. 50 you know 50 states away it just felt i never got to see her way, you're right. suddenly every weekend she's next to me so i got to see shelby grow up which was lovely which was great and it's cool having my brother next to me you know he was my i we had a much older brother than he was the closest brother uh when i was growing up so it was kind of cool that we've we came full circle in our 40s wendy i'm we're so delighted that you're telling all these stories because everybody knows you everybody knows who you are they love you but they don't really know you and i hope they get an idea now there's something very to do with Wendy Rieger more than just a pretty face. Yeah, I th I fight that all the time. You know, that pr the pretty that. face thing has been it's been a burden. It's better than it tell the people you have a face a for radio. <laughs> <laughs> you don't tell anybody that. We know plenty of people like that, don't we? Wendy, get to life on that. <laughs> I, I love what's you. on your bucket list? Oh, not really. God, I don't. I, I don't actually don't think like that, but. Um, you know, I think I would like to, and this is old, this is probably something because I graduated high school in the 70s. I want to drive cross country. I want to take a cross country trip, go the southern route out, hang out, and then drive the northern route ba back. I just, I can't believe, because I've been everywhere. I, I just, I really want to do a cross country trip, which back in 1974 when we graduated from high school, everyone was doing it. But of course, my mother wouldn't let me because I was a girl. You know, that's too dangerous. Um, well, I'd love to do that. Well, do I, it. I might even do it in like a, an old Volkswagen uh, van, bus, yeah, with the punch up top. Yeah. Pop top. Pop top. Yeah. Well, Wendy, why not? That, that's yeah, a no, no, no. That's, I think that would be out great. Of the ordinary. And that's the other thing. I've traveled a lot lately, and, and, and I really love our country. I really oh. love America. I love it. I think it is so beautiful. It's like 50 states. I mean, it's 50 countries. And I, you know, my friend, my girlfriend, one of my best friends lives in Greece and has lived there for 35 years. And she comes home and says, I really want to see America because I've been traveling in Europe because it's easy. And I said, let's do it. Let's start doing it. Let's just hang well, out you, in America. You know, don't wait. You've got to go to your oh, bosses. And it's going to take you a month. A month to recuperate or whatever it is and do it. Don't wait, Wendy. Yeah, but I think that'd be fun. Someday. Maybe I'll do a blog. Oh, I think it'd be the world fabulous. needs more blogs. <laughs> I, I would do it in a minute if Janice would let me. <laughs> well, Janice is tough. Yeah. Janice is coming with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been delightful, Wendy. We love you. You're fabulous, and we'll all be watching Channel Four and. And thank you for being on Our Town. You're a big part of Our Town. Thank you so much for inviting me. This has been a really, tr a real treat. Thank you well, for, I, I thank you for thinking I'm worthy. Thanks. This is going to be a podcast, and people all over the world can get it. You know that. Don't I'm, I don't understand I'm, I'm, how it works. I'm calling my friends in Vietnam right now. Yeah. Janice hasn't explained to me how it works, but it'll, it'll always be up there. It's magic, and it'll be great. It's so a thank you, Wendy magic. Rieger, and this has been Our Town. Andy Ockershausen, and look forward to seeing you in our next pod. You've been listening to Our Town Season 1 with your host, Andy Ockershausen. New Our Town podcast episodes are released each Tuesday and Thursday. We welcome your comments and suggestions on how you like the show or who you'd like to hear from next. Catch us on Facebook at Our Town DC or visit our website at OurTownDC.com. Our special thanks to WMAL Radio in Washington, DC for hosting our podcasts.